let's do this. All we've right. got uh, levels, we've got audio. Cool. Um, so if you could just please introduce yourself and what company you're yeah. with. Uh, my name is Christian Akison. Uh, I work for uh, Sony Online Entertainment it's in San Diego. We make uh, massive multiplayer online role-playing games. Okay. Uh, when did you first realize that you were morphing into a technical artist from your original role? Uh, I don't know if Jason said this, but it was when I noticed that I enjoyed making the tools more than I did using them. So I, I'm, uh, I grew out of uh, the art. I was uh, an environment artist to begin with. And uh, yeah, I definitely, for my own sake, I found myself doing things repetitively. So I started optimizing it for my own benefit. And uh, then it just grew from there. I started doing it for multiple people. And just kind of spiraled from there. Okay, so can you uh, provide an example then from a project that you worked on that required your specific skills as a technical artist that, uh, in order to be, uh, you yeah, know, Yeah, I would say uh, player characters in massive multiplayer are very highly technical because of all their uh, constraints that need to be in place for reusability. So setting up those systems are very, very complex, and so that that's one. Uh, where okay. I had to step in. Animation, modeling, or I, I guess I'm uh, not... It's more of a pipeline, like the, the whole pipeline. So it would be from how things are going to work to game. Like, uh, are we going to make one armor set that can be reused for multiple races, for instance, to uh, okay. decrease the number of meshes in the game and things like that. Okay. And so you came to the TA role from the, uh, the art side of yeah. development. Um, how much self-directed learning did you uh, have to engage in to become an effective technical artist? Oh, so actually, this is, I want to mention this, because in college, we actually had a brief co-op with, uh, um, with the computer science department, where we uh, made a class that mixed programmers and artists and the programmers got to learn art and the artists got to learn coding which is kind of a fun way of doing it so uh, I just remember those first kind of Mel uh, sessions for me was I, I hated it but when I got working and I got to you know solve my own problems through doing it it was very rewarding so I really really grew into it and then uh, my male knowledge just kind of grew and grew, and uh, I stuck to that for years. And talking to Jason, he was like, dude, you have to switch over to Python and PyMel, and it's a completely different language. And at that point, I've been doing Mel so much that i kind of grown into that technical artist, so then I was kind of willing to make the leap. And it's, okay. It was a great thing. Yeah. Um, so what types of mathematics do you use as a technical artist, and not like you know, like different courses, but like specific mathematical concepts that you find yourself going back to? Yeah, that, I want to add one thing for the last, yeah. last oh, question. Oh, sure, please. Is, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, the learning where, you know, it was very much kind of self-taught actually. And and I find when you learn by doing, you, you, you know, it's just you become driven to solve your original problem because it's your problem and you want to solve it, so you go out there and learn. And that's really going to be a trick for us in academia to try to create that environment. Yeah, you know, I think but. like we, uh, where, I, where I went to school, I, I happened to start in Maya right as it was beta. So they switched over from uh, Power Animator. So the, even the instructors, even though they had gone up to Autodesk and got certified, they didn't know the software. So we got, we had to learn, you know, together as a group. So it was, mm -hmm. and it was very much learning by doing project, you know, based stuff. That's that's actually really cool. I'm, I'm kind of in the same role right now with my students in Unity. Yeah. You know, so oh, I'm not that far ahead of them. I've been dabbling around in Unity. Oh, it's it, a fun program. We'll yeah. have to talk about that after the interview. <laughs> yeah. there. Um, is there any like esoteric mathematics, uh, like you oh, know, yeah, kind of concept? Oh yeah, or, or yeah. even the basic. Or it, it, yeah, common. I've run up a couple of certain problems, like when I was developing tools, where I was like, oh man, I'm going to have to deal with vectors and normals and all this math stuff. So same thing. Yeah, I find myself going. You know, the Oracle tells you everything you want to know. <laughs> you know, you, you Google, you know, Googling and just learning through Googling is the yeah, best. So the few times that I had to, like, learn math, I've Googled math and graphics and things like that. Okay. Um, so in addition to the mathematics, are there other low-level technical concepts that you had to really come to oh, a deep well, understanding of? Uh, I, well, as far as programming goes, programming uh, or object even object-oriented programming, yeah, okay. uh, because Python is all uh, 
class-based, so yeah, I've been basically converting to full-on object-oriented programming. All our code is now class-based. So, but that's been a great learning experience. Okay. Yeah, it just increases your power. <laughs> you know. Okay. And over the course of your career, I'm guessing that there's also been changes in the art pipeline in the way game art is produced. Uh, were there other artistic principles you had to uh, kind of come up to speed with to be, um, you know, maintain current? Uh, your your current status in the industry. Sure, the, I mean there's new tools and and uh, you know higher resolutions and higher mesh density and you know uh, new nor, you know normal maps and but uh, for the most part in massive I think massive multiplayer land is the not the bleeding edge because you have to always consider that server side client side. So you have, your server has to be aware of where all the players are. So we, we have a lot of, it's very, very challenging, which is one way I kind of, I love that because it's, I think, probably the most challenging game to develop. That's why these things take like mm. six years, right. you know, on average, to make a full-on massive multiplayer game. So the network latency factors into your art creation process. Well, it does, like the systems, how everything right. is supposed to work, like the combat system, how is the animation supposed to work, can okay. we translate the characters? We can't really have collision detection, that would be insane on the, you know, if there's 100,000 people on the server, how, how do you even deal with that? <laughs> that makes sense. So there, yeah, there's a lot of those things to consider in the massive multiplayer game. Okay. Um, so, if there was just one thing that you could tell academics about the role of a technical artist, what would it be? What do we need to know? If um, well, one thing is you may not know yet that you are one. Because it's not, I don't think it's, for some people, yeah, they're definitely geared that way. But basically, if you're a, a problem solver and you start thinking about how to make things more efficient, then you're probably going to skew into the tech art field, just by nature, you know? Okay. Is there is there anything else? You know, feel free to fill up the rest of the memory on the camera. All right. <laughs> anything else you you want me to know, or I I, want uh, not just me, but you know, everyone to know? Yeah, I think I stuck in the little, you know, my little advices. It's learn by doing. I mean, I don't know. You know, different people are in different situations. But when I was in school, I just lived it, breathed it, and you know, if you have that, uh, you know, drive basically, then. You're gonna get more. You, you're gonna get more experience. You're gonna run into more problems, and you're gonna have to work around and solve more problems. The more stuff you do, basically. So, Christian, thank you very much. You're welcome.